Let's create live visuals using Pure Data. Gem is a collection of externals that allows us to create generative visuals in Pure Data. We can create a 3D shape and change its size, rotate it, move it around, and do much more. What's cool about doing generative visuals in Pure Data is that we can map musical parameters directly to the visuals. For example, we can have a generated B sequencer, and when there's a snare hit, the size of a 3D cube will shrink quickly and get larger. Another example is mapping a low-pass filter parameter to rotational speed. As the filter opens up, the object spins faster. So if this sounds interesting and fun to you, then let's learn how to get started. After covering the basics, we'll recreate what we saw in the beginning. And we'll also talk about how we can go further with Gem beyond this tutorial. First, go to Help, find Externals, and search and install Gem. After installing, create an object that says declare-lib-gem. Okay, let's first understand how Gem works. The visual will show up in a separate window, and there are a set of objects that can create and manipulate shapes, much similar to how we can create a sound and manipulate with effects, such as filters. To create the window that will display the visual, we need GemWin, as in Gem window, and we need three message objects, create comma one, zero comma destroy, and demand 640, 480. Create will display the window and destroy will hide it. And we can set the dimension or the size of the window with demand. I have it at 640 by 480, but you can have it larger or smaller. Okay, let's move on to generating visuals. The signal flow of Gem is a bit counterintuitive, so let's review the signal flow of audio in Pure Data. First, we have a sound source, whether it's noise or a sine tone. Then we have objects that manipulate the sound, such as filters, for example. And finally, we have a DAC, which will convert everything into an analog signal so that we can hear it through our speakers. Gem is an opposite of this. For example, if we wanted to create a 3D sphere that we can change the color of, we would need these set of objects in this particular order. So we have the sphere right here at the end. And here's the object that allows us to change the color. And finally, this object is the render object. Intuitively, the shape should be the first in the signal chain, and the render object should be at the end, similar to how it is with the DAC object. But once you get over this, Gem is pretty easy to get the hang of. Let's add more to what we have so far. First, we'll have a message object that will change the shape into a mesh instead of something fully rendered. We can have a scale object which will change the size. And we can also have a rotate object. Okay, let's do something interesting. We can have LFOs with slightly varying speeds and map each output to the X, Y, and Z parameters of the rotate object. All right, here comes the fun part. We can copy and paste the generated B sequencer from a previous tutorial and we'll use it to animate the sphere. We can map the 16th note clock to the color parameter. So every 16th note, the red, green, and blue parameters are randomly generated. And by using a line object, we can change the size of the sphere. So upon hitting the bang object, the sphere quickly shrinks down and then it'll grow over time. And these values are arbitrarily chosen. And we can have it activate every time there's a snare or a kick. And here's that LFO rotation from before. Okay, let's see this in action. Next, let's add a cube. We could simply connect all the objects that we have been using like this. But let's have the rotate object with different parameter values. We'll create another rotate and connect everything from before. And we'll have an LFO that has different speed from the one that we used for the sphere. And let's make another cube. We'll do something similar with the rotate object, but the parameters will be slightly scaled. Okay, let's take a look.
All right, what's next? Well, check this out. As we can see from this amazing video by Suiteru, we can do something more complex. We can have different objects appear and disappear rhythmically, and I think we can use a gate to do that. And we can have more movement by using the translate object. By the way, here's a list of gem objects that we can play around with. I'm definitely going to revisit gem in the future. Until then, have fun exploring live visuals.